Greetings, dear viewers. One month ago, on December 15th, 2019, I streamed some Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's a magnificent game, absolutely wonderful, I very strongly recommend it. Now, at the start of the stream, one of my viewers asked a question about whether or not I had any philosophies or schools of thought that guide my behavior. Now, what you're about to see is my answer to that question. You can treat this video as a podcast style video if you want. The only actual visual footage for 99% of this video is simply the main menu uh, for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, so you can feel free to alt tab and just listen in if you like. But personally, I think watching the little menu graphics move slowly along uh, just sort of goes pretty well with the philosophies and such that we discuss in this video, so consider that if you like. Now, here's a quick bit of backdrop before we get started. Uh, for any of my viewers who don't yet know this about me, 2019, for me, was without a doubt my absolute lowest point in my life. I suffered through loneliness. I went through practically three breakups in 2019 as I tried to fend off that loneliness. I fell into financial hardships that I'm still trying to work my way out of. And I even went through a period of a few weeks or maybe even months where I was drinking very heavily. I didn't go to like extreme alcoholic levels of drinking. It wasn't an everyday thing, so don't worry about that. But I did drink once or twice a week. And when I did drink, I intentionally drank heavily and got very drunk. Some of those days and nights where I did that, I even caused quite a bit of damage to some of my relationships. And I'm not proud of that. But don't worry, at this point, things are pretty much smoothed over. Things are okay now. But yeah, 2019 was extremely low. And that's not even mentioning the fact that in early 2019, um, I, th and this isn't really a major issue or anything, but I rolled my ankle so bad that it took like eight months to heal. And I don't really consider that one part of my depression or anything like that. That wasn't a major issue. That, Mentally speaking, that barely registered. You know, to me, that was just another of life's adventures, you know, whatever. Not a big, uh, n n n nothing that's going to bring me down. But it just goes to show you, you know, eight months healing, then your ankle heal. It just goes to show you, you know, I, I went through more in 2019 than I'm even mentioning here. Yeah, 2019 was an extremely low point for me. Um, I've never been that low or depressed in my life as I was last year. But, but, in December 2019, at the end of the year, right there at the end of the year, last month of the year, in December 2019, something changed for me, and you're about to hear about it. Now, keep in mind, what you're about to hear in, in, uh, going forward in this video was recorded on December 15th, 2019, so a month ago uh, during my stream. So when you hear me use the phrase, this year, in the upcoming dialogue, just know that at the time I was, of course, referring to 2019. Okay, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to say as a preface here, so let's get started. Starting soon thingy here, and click on the game, and let's see what we have here. Uh, ten minutes ago, Malsakai redeemed ask a question saying, do you enjoy philosophy slash have any schools of thought that guides your behavior? Yes, actually, I do have numerous schools of thought that guide my behavior on various different occasions. Some of the more notable ones, for example, are what good is gold in your bag? You'll often see me um, extolling the virtues of not holding on to certain things, mostly in video games, as you know, that's how most of you interact with me is, is over some gameplay. But you'll see me get something like a super special, like one time use item, and I won't hold on to it. I tend to use that kind of thing. Or you'll see me acquire a decent sum of in game currency. And you won't see me save it, because I'm not the type to save my in-game currency like that. Because what good is gold in your bag? It does you no good as gold. So turn it into something that will do you some good, and do it soon. Um, another one that I picked up from Alarak in uh, StarCraft II, the hero 
of the Commander Alarak, Protoss generic badass evil guy. One thing that happens in the campaign is he and Artanis are overlooking a battle plan and Artanis wants to step back and take some time to plan the appropriate course of action, which is generally a pretty good thing to do. But Alarak said something that kind of resonates with me and I actually apply, I, I apply this in appropriate places in my life. Alarak said, do not examine act because Alarak is a man of action he is um I've seen I've seen this happen to a lot of people with a lot of their projects and a lot of areas of their life they will sit back and they will try and plan the perfect route for themselves this happens in gaming this happens in jobs this happens in school this happens in life people tend to sit back and they try and plot they plot a course they try and make a plan and I've seen it happen, and I've been one to do this as well, where people will plan something, again, something in gaming or work or school or life, they will plan something into oblivion. You make a plan, and then you keep planning, and you keep planning, and you keep planning and planning, and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning, and planning until all you've done is plan and nothing ever comes of it. You plan into oblivion. And uh, I think Alarak exemplifies the idea that even a uh, that even a less optimal or a suboptimal course of action is better than no course of action. So I apply that in my life as well in the appropriate places. Do not examine. Act. Do something. If you're faced with a ton of choices on what you can do next, pick one and go. Don't sit there deliberating your entire time away. Time is your most valuable resource and you don't know how much of it you have. Because life is finite. Do not examine. Act. There are other philosophies that guide my behavior um, as well. There's probably a pretty big overarching one. <laughs> one that I recently stumbled, not really stumbled upon, but one that I've recently been focused upon. One that I'm kind of applying to my life now. One that I've very, in a very real way, come to realize, learn, and become very intimate with is the idea, the prospect that in order to be happy, excuse me. <sighs> Sorry, my sinus is kind of kicked in there. My sinus is kind of kicked in there. Uh, in order to be happy. Okay, so here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like my idea of what the ideal lifestyle would be. Like this is like this is me like ten or even twenty years ago. All right, because I'm I'm thirty seven years old. So twenty years ago, I would have been seventeen. And I feel like not just my way of thinking at this time, but a lot of younger people's way of thinking is that the like the goal in life, the ideal thing in life is to get to a point where you can kind of just sit back, relax, and do whatever you want. You have like all kinds of passive forms of income. Maybe you've gotten into investing or real estate or the stock market, or you've got a YouTube channel with very popular videos. You know, everyone wants to be able to just wake up in the morning, not have to go to work, and just do whatever you want all day. Be happy, love, live, go to sleep, and then wake up and do it all again. That sounds ideal, right? Well, I have learned over the past 37 years, and one thing that I've become very intimate with lately is the idea, the prospect, the reality, the absolute reality that you cannot live a lifestyle like that. I have tried, and I have been miserable. I... I, I I actually reached a point with X's adventures in Minecraft where I was pulling down I, I, I was pulling down paychecks where I was being paid by YouTube and Machinima for other projects. YouTube, all, all this stuff. I was getting paid so much money that I didn't have to do anything. Like X's adventures in Minecraft and my other videos and other sources of income kept, kept me more than afloat. I was getting a lot of money from the millions of views that I was getting off of that series. And I was like, I, I, I did it. I reached that point. I got to the point where I don't have to do anything. I can wake up, play video games all day, 
and then go to sleep. I can wake up, go to my friend's house, I can go hit on girls all day long, wherever I want. I can do whatever I want with my life, every single day. And yeah, it's super cool for an extremely short time. One thing that I have learned, okay, and, and, then, and then of course life happens and you know, th things go on. There's a lot of other lessons that I learned along the way and I can't tell the whole story here and now. I just can't. But suffice it to say, now, here I am, more than a, well, a, about a decade later, because X's Adventures in Minecraft uh, this coming year is going to be 10 years old. So here I am just about a decade later. I've learned so many lessons along the way. And here's the one that I'm trying to make the point about. You cannot live a lifestyle where you just do nothing all day. You can't, that's not happiness. You have to lift some sort of burden. And I've studied this. I've read books. I've watched videos. Um... And I have applied myself to various different viewpoints, and I've learned that you have to do something. You need some sort of purpose in your life. You need to, you need to, you need to carry your cross. Because I'm a Catholic, you, there, you need to carry some sort of burden, right? Stress. We all want to avoid stress. Everybody is really fucking stressed out these days, like extremely stressed. There's, there's so many things to be stressed about. The world's not exactly in the best geopolitical place it's ever been in, right? Um, and as far as finances are concerned, most people are getting closer and closer to the poverty line while the 1% continues to soar. So there's a money crunch. There's a housing crunch. There were, there's all sorts, there's also, and the, that's not even saying the personal reasons that we all have. Like maybe a lot of us are just faced with depression, family issues, sickness. There's a lot of stuff for us to be stressed about. School is a huge one. Most people I know are going through school, and school takes a ton of your money, a ton of your time, and it demands superhuman levels of focus, concentration, and sleep deprivation from you in order to just scrape by in it. School is ex ex exorbitantly demanding and stressful. And then you have work. You have work in a very fast-paced world. Technology has moved work to a, uh, to a level where we are expected to perform and can keep outperforming ourselves as well as others over and over and over again in an investor's world, right? Every job, every company that you could possibly work for wants you to continue to perform and raise that bar chart or that line chart up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And anytime that little line drops down, it hits you right? Work, life, school, love, health, everything, absolutely everything, even playing video games, social lives. There's nothing in this world that isn't just a vice grip of stress, right? So of course the idea is we want to, we want to minimize stress as much as possible in our lives. So we turn to things like drinking and CBD tincture and sex and whatever uh, uh, smoking weed or toking however you want to call it um uh toking weed or food you know which makes us gain weight which of course increases our stress we turn to all these things as ways of to, uh, minimizing stress and we look for we purposely look for ways to do nothing because all the stuff we do is extremely stressful all the stuff that is demanded of us is extremely stressful right so of course we look for ways to reach a point where we can just do nothing like, we have this extremely stressful week, and then we have like a Saturday afternoon all to ourselves where we don't have to do anything. You look forward to being able to do that. And yes, resting and taking breaks at appropriate times when you need to recharge is extremely important. But you can't, uh, it's easy to think that the perfect lifestyle would be to be done with all that. You've got your degree, you've got your career, you've got your family. It's easy to think that your perfect lifestyle would be one of doing as much of nothing as possible. So you can finally relax right it's easy to think that but i've learned recently that that is actually not true it just isn't you have to carry some sort of burden you have to um you have to find some sort of purpose in your life i have recently been coming off of well as you, as a lot of you folks know i have recently been going through one of the most stressful depressive dark difficult years of my life i am just coming off of that g saying thank you for the twitch prime sub for one light year in a row much appreciated thank you thank you thank you or is that g sung 
is that Jisang? Jisung? How would you pronounce? How would you prefer to pronounce that? Because I know in Chinese the ENG is ung. So is that Jisung? Anyway, uh, point being, I'm coming off of one of the most depressive years of my life. Right, 2019 has been an extreme. Has been my my lowest point ever. I've got no money. I've gone through practically three breakups this year. I've attempted to learn commitment this year and in some ways have succeeded and in many ways have failed spectacularly. Um, This has been an extremely rough year in my life and I was lost. I really was. But over the past, I'd say month or so, I stumbled upon the idea not really stumbled upon it, but came to the realization of this idea in a very solid way, a very an, an almost tangible way, a way that has really actually uh, affected right. Ung, you got it right. Nice, thank you. Been a long time following on YouTube. Stay strong, bro. Thank you, Jisung. I appreciate that. Um, but very recently, within this past month, I realized when I kicked up my Dishonored 2 playthrough again, when I started that again, and I started taking steps to start taking control of my life, I started doing Dishonored 2 again, that felt really good to get that going. Um, I started going back to the gym, that feels really good to keep that going. Uh, I cleaned up around here because my my environment used to be a colossal, just depressing mess, just complete mess, but I organized everything, I cleaned up everything, I got all that going. Um, I stocked my fridge. I bought all my medicines. I've been keeping my stream going on a regular basis. I'm keeping myself busy and I'm making progress and I am moving forward because I have learned that there are two. Listen, there. this is extremely important for anybody listening to this right now or who's tuned out or like, you know, you've been thinking about something else. Come back here. Listen to this because this is extremely important and it plays right into what I'm talking about, about carrying a burden. Um, there, there are two activities, there are two kinds of activities um, that you can pursue in your life. Two types of activities. The first type of activity is one of instant gratification. And these activities are the kinds that I was pursuing, and I think many of us pursue. The types of instant gratification, but that ultimately get us nowhere. They're wastes of time. Not really wastes, because they can, they can have their place, and there, there is a time and place for them frequently. But there are the instant gratification kinds of uh, activity, and then there are the activities that you can pursue, which are actually sort of unpleasant to do at the time. They're almost like work. They're a discipline. Things like going to the gym, or recording a Dishonored 2 playthrough. Stuff like that, right? Going to the groceries and buying all that stuff and carrying it to your car and coming back, right? Things like that. Um, And when when you're in a depressed state, you look for these distractions, the first type. You look for these distractions. You have, you look for the first type, the ones that constantly keep you distracted, the ones that give you instant gratification. I'm talking about spending eight hours in Tarkov looting Oli over and over and over and over and over and over again to get as many cords, as many hoses and motors as you can so that you can get a bunch of rubles, right? That's an instant gratification kind of thing. Poet in a box resubscribing with a tier one sub for 43 light years saying, just came to say hi. Have a great stream. Going to bed now watching the VOD later. Poet, thank you again for all the support. Much appreciated for the 43 light years. And again, for all the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So things like going to Oli, looting them all, all, all the time. Things like playing Minecraft, for your whole day or maybe for like an hour you jump in you play minecraft you build yourself a nice little hut or whatever a nice little house you work on a little minecraft project that's pretty cool you do that and you're left and, and ultimately you have this cool little thing but you're not gonna but like three months from now you're not gonna be playing that world anyway right but it's just something for you to do in the meantime to distract yourself right um maybe having a root beer float makes you feel good at the time but after that the the, grat- the gratification from that it's short-lived it's a quick It's a quick little burn. It burns bright, but then it burns out and leaves just behind this little wisp of smoke and nothing else. You've got nothing from those sorts of things. And when you're depressed, when you're sad, you seek out these distractions constantly, all the time. And that's all you ever find yourself doing are these little tiny distractions that don't really get you anywhere. So the more you do those, the further and further down the slope of depression you go because you're spending more and more time making nothing of yourself, doing nothing. You're not lifting any kind of burden. You aren't furthering yourself. You aren't furthering your life. You aren't climbing, right? There needs to be an active climb in order for you to feel a sense of 
self-worth and that's the most important thing when you have that sense of self-worth and you have a goal in the future you have something you're working toward and you can see yourself moving toward that and you move toward it every single day your mood improves your life improves your ability to interact with others improves your ability to succeed at whatever you try improves when you grow yourself by doing the second type of activity the ones that you know you kind of have to work at at first maybe they can be a little bit of enjoyable like going to the gym can be enjoyable while you're there it's fun it's it's fun to lift the weights and maybe if you're a really active type you like running on the treadmill a little bit but it's still work there's still an uh, amount of energy that you have to put into it a certain amount of commitment that you have to rally before you can actually get going a lot of people struggle to go to the gym for example or maybe things like starting your youtube channel recording a dishonored 2 series it's difficult for me to actually get that time sometimes in order to actually sit down and do that sort of thing which is why my stream only happens twice a week because it's very difficult for me to find long periods of quiet time where i can actually record this stuff right because there's all kinds of stuff that's always going on we all have things to take care of we all have things to do Right, so that's how come it was very difficult for me to continue Dishonored because it's not very easy for me to find those things. But I worked at it. I found a way to be able to do that, and I still I still fail at it sometimes. I don't record every single day. In fact, most days I don't. But I still work at finding it. I prioritize it. So whenever you do these things, maybe you want to learn a new language. You actually sit down. You start learning that language. Maybe you want to learn how to code. You sit down. You start learning how to code. So you can go for a run. You can go to the gym. You can start learning a new profession, a new skill, a new language. You can start up a YouTube channel, you can pick up an instrument, you can lift some sort of burden, make it your goal. And again, these things are hard to do. But here's the thing about them. Whenever you do things like these, again, I'm just going to use going to the gym as an example, because it's one that everyone can relate to. Whenever you start doing these things, you don't see an immediate payoff. It does going to the gym on it doesn't pay off unless you do it regularly. And it doesn't even pay off until at some point in the future. But the more you do it regularly, the higher and higher you climb. Eventually the future arrives and you start to reap the benefits from the work, from the seeds you've already sown. You start to reap those later down the line. And as you keep doing that, you keep building all of this up more and more and more. Think about it like StarCraft. You build an SCV, that costs you 50 minerals, right? You're down 50 minerals in the game now. That SCV comes out and then he starts mining minerals. He won't make back his minerals until like a minute into the game, right? Then he'll have paid himself off. But after that minute, that SCV starts making a profit passively on his own, right? He starts making more than the 50 minerals that he costs. And as time goes on in the game, he keeps pulling back eight minerals, eight minerals, eight minerals, eight minerals, eight minerals, eight minerals, until eventually he is nothing but profit. And the longer you go, having built that SCV, the more profit you have gained off of that singular SCV, which is why you keep spending 50 minerals on SCV after SCV after SCV after SCV. You keep doing that because each one continues to ramp up your progress faster and faster the more you have so that you start having as much as you need, as much as you want to do the things that you want and to achieve the things that you want to achieve. The gym is the exact same way. You spend an hour on that treadmill one day, that hurts, that's not fun. That's difficult to do. You do it every day for a week then the next week, you, your legs are stronger, you're faster. It's easier to do that hour on the treadmill. It's not as hard as it was before. And if, you, if your goal is weight loss, you'll find that you may have lost three pounds that week, right? So you keep doing it, it starts to feel good. You do it for a month, you do it for a month, you're down like 12, 15 pounds. You're running faster. You're, you're clearing that mile that you wanted to go in less than an hour now. Things become easier. They become more fun. You feel better about yourself. And this applies to absolutely everything. So I have, what I have started to do, what I have started to do is I have started to do only, well, for the most part, I, I, I've changed the ratio of instant gratification actions that I do. Because I used to have a very high ratio of instant gratification actions to um, furthering my life type actions, right? I used, I used to have way more of the instant gratification ones than the furthering my life type ones. What I have done is I have changed the ratio. And now I have way, way, way fewer of the instant gratification actions in my life and a ton more of the actions that are going to help me 
in the future, the kinds of things that are going to make me happier in the long run. It's like building SCVs. You have to keep doing it. As, and the more you keep doing it, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So I've started putting Dishonor 2 back on my YouTube channel. Every single time that I game, I try and record so that I can make a video that's going to help me out in the future. And it's going to provide um, entertainment for you folks, which is fantastic. I stick to my stream every Sunday and Wednesday. I stick to this as closely as I possibly can. I've been going to the gym at at minimum three times a week, sometimes four, sometimes five, but I'm trying to I'm trying to actually keep it around three or four. I've been going to the gym constantly and doing the things that help me improve in that regard. And there's other things that I'm doing too. I've added all of this stuff. I, and, and these are all things I've done before, but now I'm doing them with purpose. I have a goal. I have an idea of what I want. I want to. So my goal, my idea here the one the thing that i'm looking most toward right now is to at some point i want to prove to my viewers that i can maintain a regular upload schedule that i can finish the playthroughs that i start and i can produce regular youtube content i want people to be able to trust in my channel again but most importantly i want to prove that i can do that to myself well, not to myself. I want to prove to myself. That was very awkwardly worded, I know. But I want to prove to myself that I can do all that. And I've done this before. I have, with my stream, I have actually done this. A lot of people don't know this, but way back when I started doing my stream on the regularly scheduled basis, way back with a game called Rise of the Phoenix, I could have started putting up subscriptions, but my channel didn't allow for subscriptions. I didn't turn on that feature. I've been a partner on Twitch since like 2011, but I didn't turn on the ability to subscribe to my channel until like 2016, 17, something like that. So I went like five or six years intentionally leaving subscriptions turned off for my channel because I knew that the way I streamed, I would go for like three months, but then I would take like four months off, right? So for like half the year, I wasn't streaming. And to me, I didn't want to charge people money for a stream that wasn't going to provide them consistent content. So do you know what I did? I started streaming every Sunday and every Wednesday regularly. And that, now this is one of my first steps toward being able to commit. And this was years ago. And I have succeeded at this, I think, in a, in a pretty in a pretty fantastic way. I set a realistic goal for myself, Sundays and Wednesdays for two hours each. That's it. It's not a difficult goal to reach, but for somebody like me who is known to take four months off of creating content at a time, uh, I, I, I couldn't trust myself to do it. So for six months, for half a year, I stuck to that schedule. Once I had done this for half of a full year, right? Once I had done this schedule regularly, I had proven to myself that I can actually have a Twitch channel that I think viewers might find it worth to subscribe to. They want to put their $5 to my channel. I now know from this past experience of doing a schedule that I can actually continue to provide that consistent content. So that's what I am doing now with my YouTube channel. I'm going to finish this Dishonored 2 playthrough and probably, well, I'm not going to tell you what my plans are. I want everything to still be kind of open-ended so I'm not locked into doing one thing or another. I'm going to find what works the way I did with my Twitch channel and then run with that. That's what I'm going to do. So I want to first rebuild faith in my upload schedule, in my channel, and build my own confidence in my ability to create consistent content, good content. And once I have proven to myself and to my viewers that I can do that, I will turn on Patreon and I will let people begin becoming patrons of my channel. And I want to do this in order to make enough money to do the things that I need and want to do in my life. So I have a goal, something that I can see in the future. The first steps toward that are doing all of these things that improve my life in the long term, even if doing them at the time is not instantly gratifying, right? I want to do all of these things that are not instantly gratifying, but that will help improve my life in the long term. So that's what I am actually doing. That's my current plan. That's my current goal. Okay. 
Now, oh, oh, and for those wondering, I am actually feeling way better about myself, and I feel way less depression than I did even four weeks ago, right? Since I started doing all this stuff, I feel way better than I have throughout most of 2019. 2019 has been a really, really low point, but I am starting to feel like myself again. Finally, once I started doing these things, once I set a goal and started moving toward that goal, I finally started pulling out of that depression. I started climbing out of it and back into the light, right? That's where I want to be. I want to get out there. I want to be within the light that I hope to also spread to others. That's what I want to do. And I need to take and I need to take a step back and really analyze what my own goals are because I don't even know if that's necessarily my goal anymore to be that light in the darkness. I like being that light in the darkness, but I don't know if that's actually my my singular goal anymore. So there are all kinds of things that I need to do in order to get to exactly to where I want to be, but I'm excited for it and I'm looking for it. So again, once I set that goal of being able to rebuild faith for myself and for my viewers in my YouTube channel and my upload schedule, and I started going to the gym and doing Dishonored and maintaining my stream and playing as much as I can with others and recording and doing scripts for certain videos. Once I started doing all this work and doing all these things that uh, serve to, again, not be gratifying in the now, but will help me in the future, will improve my life in the future, I, I, I came to fully realize that you have to lift some sort of burden. You can't just exist. You can't just sit there existing hoping to crawl out of depression. No, you have to take the steps. You have to carry some sort of burden. And once you do, once you start doing that, it is possible for you to pull yourself out of depression. It's it's a very real thing that you can do. Now, there is some there is some types of depression, clinical depression, that is actually chemical, and that has to be treated in a different way. But one of the steps that you can do if you are depressed is to find out whether your depression is clinical depression or if it's one that you can treat simply by standing up and walking. Move forward. Because you can't just exist and hope to live a life where you do nothing all the time because then you'll feel absolutely worthless because then you, then you basically are worthless. You just exist throughout your days until eventually those days come to an end. That's not the kind of life that you want. You want to carry some sort of burden. You need a sense of self-worth. You need a sort of purpose. And it's up to everybody to figure out what that is for themselves. And I think, at least for now, I've found out what that is for me. I have a goal, and I'm taking the actions that I need to take in order to do these sorts of things. And I finally feel much better today than I did even four weeks ago. <clears throat> well, see, that's what I'm talking about, Yvonne69. What about the actual mental illness that is diagnosed depression? That's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that a month ago I was just sad. I wasn't just, oh, I'm so sad. No, I was downright depressed it was actual depression now mine was yes i don't know it, well mine actually probably could be diagnosed as the mental illness depression because i have seen a psychologist before numerous times in the past for months or even years at a time i have been to therapy i have seen a psychologist and my psychologist years and years ago actually diagnosed me as borderline depressed and that was years ago then i stopped seeing him and then he retired. So I haven't seen a psychologist in a long time. And during that time, years passed, and I sank further and further and further. I'm, sh I'm positive I crossed that line from borderline depression into actual deep depression. And that all came to a head this year. Now, as for the other type of depression, and this is the one I think that you're referring to, Yvonne, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where we're talking about chemical depression. There's uh, there's clinical depression. It's a chemical in your mind and in your body. That needs to get diagnosed. For that, like I said, one of the first steps you can do is see a psychologist, see a doctor, go to your family physician, just a normal doctor. You don't have to go to a shrink right away. You don't have to go see a psychiatrist or a psychologist right away. Go to your normal family physician, the same person that you go to when you have a cold go or, or, a, or, 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 or an infection. Uh, go to that person and tell them what you feel. That person is trained enough to be able to tell you whether or not you should see a psychologist and then probably recommend one for you. That's how I started seeing my psychologist. My doctor told me, hey, look, you need to get this, you need to get your mind right or you're going to die. 
that kind of got me in a, in a mindset that, okay, I should go see a psychologist because I don't want to die. That's where I was at that point. So I had to go do that. So that's what you can do. You need to determine what type of depression you have and then take the steps to combat it. And that can very well serve as your first goal. That can serve as your first motivation if those are the steps that you want to take. Uh, anyway, thank you, Valkyrie Flame. I appreciate that. So anyway, um, Malsakai, thank you for asking that question because that gave me a way to be able to express these thoughts that I've been thinking for a while. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> wow. That was cool. Anyway, so you asked me if I enjoy philosophy or if I have any schools of thought that guide my behavior. What good is gold in your bag? You need to carry some kind of burden. And I'm sure I mentioned some other one too, but I forgot it by now. But yeah, <laughs> those are just some examples, right? That first can be the hardest, absolutely. Okay, so that was awesome. 